Hi, TUSA. I hope you guys had a great long weekend. We are going to start a new chapter book. It's called The Miniature World of Marvin and James. Okay. Um, we're all very excited over here. Scarlett and Sawyer are making a birthday sign for a friend, and Scouty's helping too. Can you guys just turn and say hi? Hi. Hi. Okay. Um, so now we will get started with our new book. Okay, The Miniature World of Marvin and James. I heard this was a good one, but I actually haven't read this yet, so I'm excited. Okay, this is a sort of short chapter book since we have a short week. Chapter one is called James Says Goodbye. Marvin is sad. James is going away. Just to the beach, James tells him. Mrs. Pompaday and William are going too. Only Mr. Pompaday will stay. Marvin does not like Mr. Pompaday. James says, I will be back in a week. That does not make Marvin feel better. A week is a long time. He will miss James. He rolls into a ball like this. Who's Marvin? A snail? He is not a snail. He oh. is a little bug. Wait, where is he going? Is he the one who's going on a beach? Nope, James is the boy. That, that person? James, yep. James leans close to Marvin. Don't be sad, little guy. When I come home, I'll bring you a surprise. Even that does not make Marvin feel better. What will he do without James? James is his best friend. You can help me pack, James says. He lifts his suitcase onto the bed. Marvin does not want to help James pack, but at least it's something they can do together. It's an interesting friendship, right? A boy and a bug. James has a list of everything he needs to pack. He puts the list on his desk. Vacation list. Socks, underwear, swimsuit, pajamas, shirts, shorts, toothbrush, book. Now, when I say something, cross it off, James tells Marvin. He opens the bottle of ink on the desk. He puts the cap next to Marvin with a little ink in it. Marvin can't read, but he is good at crossing things off. He dips his front legs into the ink. Mom, should I make Cooper bigger than me? Shh, can you just listen for now? One, says James, socks. He puts socks in the suitcase. Marvin draws a line through the first word on the list. Two, says James, underwear. He puts underwear in the suitcase. Marvin draws a line through the second word. Three, swimsuit. James puts his swimsuit in the suitcase. It has dragonflies on it. Marvin thinks it would look nicer with beetles. Why do you think he thinks it would look nicer with beetles? Because he is a beetle. He draws a line through the third word on the list. Four, pajamas. James puts his pajamas in the suitcase. Marvin draws a line through the fourth word. See, you are really helping, James tells him. That's half my list. Five, shirts. He puts shirts in the suitcase. Oops, Marvin has no more ink on his legs. He dips them in the cap again. He draws a line through the fifth word on the list. Six, shorts. My suitcase is almost full. James squeezes his shorts into the suitcase. Marvin draws a line through the sixth word on the list. Seven, toothbrush. I, James tells Mar Marvin, I always forget my toothbrush. That's why I made a list in the first place. He puts his toothbrush in the suitcase. Marvin draws a line through the seventh word. Toothbrush. There is only one word left. Eight, book. That's everything, says James. He takes a book from his shelf. Marvin draws a line through the last word on the list. There's no room, James says. Guys, shh. Oh my goodness, sorry. There's no room, James says. He puts the book on the floor and moves things around in the suitcase. James, Mrs. Pompaday calls. Are you ready? We can't be late for the plane. Coming, Mom, James says. He zips his suitcase shut. Uh-oh, the book is still on the floor. James will forget his book. Marvin runs over the list. All the words are crossed off. He taps his legs on number eight. James sees him. Good job, he says. You've crossed off everything. Marvin keeps tapping. 
James puts on his shoes. Marvin runs around in circles. Don't worry, James says, I'll be back soon. Marvin runs to the cap of ink and dips his legs in it. James stands up, time to go. Marvin runs back to the paper and draws this. An arrow. Finally, James understands. Oh, he says, I forgot my book. He finds the book on the floor and puts it in his suitcase. Marvin sighs. Thanks, little guy. James smiles at Marvin. You are a big help. He pats Marvin's shell. Goodbye. See you in a week. Marvin lifts one leg and waves goodbye. He is still sad, but at least he helped James pack. And James did not forget his book. And we'll read one more chapter today. Chapter two is called In the Study. Marvin is bored. Without James, there's nothing to do. It has been days and days since he went away. Marvin, cheer up, Mama says. James will be home soon. Why don't you draw something? There's this little beetle mom. He has a beetle mom. Under the kitchen sink where the beetles live, there's an art studio just for Marvin. James gives him paper and ink. He can draw and draw. Marvin loves making pictures, but today he just doesn't feel like it. You can see in the kitchen, that's where they live. I miss James, he tells Mama. I know, darling, Mama says, but you have to stop moping. Only boring beetles get bored. <laughs> Marvin frowns. Mama sometimes says things that don't make sense. A boring beetle would not have an interesting life in the first place. Why would he get bored? I'm not boring, Marvin says in a small voice. I know you're not, Mama hugs him, so why don't you think of something to do? Go play with Elaine. Elaine is Marvin's cousin. Sometimes she is fun, sometimes she is annoying. But there is nobody else to play with, so Marvin agrees. Come on, Elaine says, grabbing one of Marvin's legs. Let's have an adventure. What kind of adventure? I'll show you, I found a new place for us to play. Elaine leads the way to Mr. Pompadier's study. The beetles seldom go in there because there's no food. There's only Mr. Pompadier working at his desk. Marvin thinks Mr. Pompadier is a good example of a boring person. He can't see it. But he's not there, today the study is empty. Elaine crawls up the side of the big desk. Marvin, she shouts, look at this. Marvin follows her. He sees something strange on the desk. It's a black box with a hole in it. Elaine climbs up the side and disappears through the hole. Elaine, Marvin cries, where are you? He can hear her laughing. Come on, it's fun. Marvin looks around. It seems safe. He crawls up the side of the black box. It is smooth and slippery. He peeks in the hole. It's dark inside the box and the air is full of dust. Marvin crawls through the hole. He is in a short, bumpy tunnel. At the end is a big black space. Far below, Elaine is jumping and rolling in a pile of something. It's so soft, she calls to Marvin. What is that stuff, Marvin says. What are they inside? Look, there's a black hole in a container. And there's soft stuff inside. They're inside a pencil sharpener. Wood, Elaine says. Wood? Why are there little pieces of wood in this funny black box? Marvin watches Elaine. She's doing somersaults. Come and see, she says. Here, I'll show you. She climbs back up to where Marvin is waiting. Look, she says, like this. Elaine puts her front two legs together and dives. She flies through the air and lands with a soft ft. Wee, she shouts. What are you waiting for? She's using the pencil shavings, almost like a pool. It does look fun. Okay, Marvin says, here I come. He puts his front two legs together and dives. For a second, he's flying through the air like a butterfly or a dragonfly or just a plain old fly. He feels fast and free. Then he lands in a soft pile of wood shavings. Pfft, dust rises in clouds all around him. Hey, this is great, Marvin says, crawling back up the inside of the box. Told you so, says Elaine, following him. What is this thing, Marvin asks. I don't know, Elaine says, but isn't it the best? They perch at the edge of the tunnel, then dive one after another. First, Elaine does a belly flop, Marvin copies her. Then Marvin does a somersault, Elaine copies him. They jump in, holding hands. 
see what point they jump and spin three times. They even jump backwards. Wee! Woohoo! They have never had such a good time. As they are jumping and diving and rolling in the soft wood shavings, they hear a noise. Marvin freezes. What was that? He asks Elaine. I don't know, she says. They hear footsteps close to the desk. A chair moves, a lamp clicks on, and light shines through the hole above them. It's Mr. Pompadour, Marvin whispers. He'll hear us. Oh, drat, Elaine says. Maybe he'll go away. They wait. They can hear Mr. Pompadour working. He does not go away. Do you think we can sneak out, Elaine whispers? Not if he's right there, Marvin says. He'll see us. I'll climb up and find out what he's doing, Elaine says. But as she climbs the inside wall of the box, something comes through the hole, completely blocking it. It is pitch black inside the box. And then suddenly there is a very loud noise. The box shakes and shakes. Marvin thinks it's going to explode. What's happening? He's, put, he's pencil sharpening. And that's the end of that job. So we'll finish, we'll read some more tomorrow, but here's what I want you to think about. So for Marvin, because he's so tiny, going into the pencil sharpener was sort of like an adventure, right? And to him, he didn't know it was a pencil sharpener. He, they thought that it was like a tunnel and then they went in and then they were using it like a swimming pool. So I want you to imagine yourself as a tiny little bug or beetle um, and think about some Thing in your house that you would want to adventure in or on and what would it look like to you if you were a tiny beetle and that's what we're going to think about today